Greetings, Internet. Um, this is Dr. Sunil Agarwal. I'm uh, starting a video blog, and this is my first post. Uh, I wanted to give an update about what is happening in New York uh, with regards to the marijuana medical use uh, policy struggle. Uh, so, the news was widely reported that uh, last week, last weekend, Governor Andrew Cuomo uh, is, has come out in favor of the idea of medical marijuana and wants to see it in practice by turning back on a program that was abandoned in 1985 in New York, which uh, was called the Oliveri Act program. Uh, where marijuana, cannabis cigarettes that were obtained from the Nida Federal Farm were distributed through, I believe, five or seven hospitals, especially, predominantly, actually exclusively to cancer patients, but the um, original law allowed glaucoma as well. Essentially, this uh, for framework, which lasted for a few years, um, uh, was New York was part of a larger wave of at least two, three dozen states that had passed similar laws where, uh, called compassionate use laws where they would um, use cannabis from the federal supply. Only seven states actually got their laws implemented at that time, and New York was one of them. The other states were Vermont, um, Michigan, Georgia, Tennessee, New Mexico, California. And Essentially, uh, uh, in California, I, I, I think I mentioned. Essentially, these states were trying to, uh, were, were responding to a federal court case that had come down when a man with glaucoma named Robert Randall had sued the federal government in court. Um, that that they had, he discovered that cannabis was allowing him to keep his vision, and that the government had funded studies. For example, uh, Helmer's studies at UCLA in the 70s showing that cannabis reduced interocular pressure. They knew this, and they uh, were not really allowing him to use it. He had been arrested uh, for using his cannabis, so he sued, and, and a federal judge forced the government to start these programs, both a federal supply program where patients would be able to directly access uh, cannabis from the federal supply if their, if their doctor said so, Gave, gave a say-so okay and went through the paperwork, and then in response to that, these states passed these laws to, to make it easier for their patients to, to use cannabis. And uh, pr the predominant uh, understanding was glaucoma and cancer chemotherapy at that time. What happened is all of these programs essentially came to a halt about 1985 when um, the federal government was also trying, you know, it has been trying to fast-track THC pills as a, as a medicine. And um, they wanted to do that maybe in um, ahead of a rescheduling petition that norm, normal National Organization for the Reform of Marijuana Laws had filed in the 70s, which was finally going to get its day in court um, through uh, with hearings that they were going through in, in the mid 80s. So uh, I think the government was interested in converting all of this interest in medical marijuana to uh, marijuana pills, synthetic THC pills at that time. And ultimately, um, as um, scientists can tell you, the, the two drugs are not equivalent. Uh, THC is a, is a, is a med has medical uses, but it's very difficult to tolerate for many patients. It's hard to dose. Uh, the benefit of whole plant cannabis medicine is the other cannabinoids like CBD mitigating some of the worst effects of THC. So these programs got shut down when, as a political maneuver, um, you know, why not have both available? But the government was interested in, in um, shutting them down, and, and that was the end of these programs. What's interesting to note is that um, several of these states that have these laws, like California, New Mexico, Michigan, Vermont, have all gone on to pass comprehensive medical marijuana laws, the first one being California, when they realized that the government really wasn't interested in, in trying to help patients, but more trying to win a political argument at the federal level on whether marijuana had medical use. So, um, you know, only Georgia and Tennessee have not, but there are, you know, a lot of groups who are trying to get comprehensive legislation in those states. Um, and in Tennessee, they've even had hearings. So, New York is essentially trying to go back to a prior era when uh, really that was turned out to be a dead end. Um, and 
re required people to start comprehensive medical marijuana programs. Um, and uh, really, those, this whole framework of the federal government supplying cannabis for compassionate purposes was shut down ultimately by uh, Bush Sr. in the Bush Sr. administration. Their um, uh, head of the Assistant Secretary of Health and the Public Health Service said, you know, we can't, for political reasons, keep this up anymore because we're busy trying to ramp up the drug war. And there was also the statement made that uh, a lot of HIV AIDS patients wanted this cannabis from the federal farm and they thought that maybe it would lead to promiscuity. Uh, so uh, just unbelievable uh, homophobic uh, and, um, you know, bigoted statements that came out of the federal government. It's, it's really um, a shock that New York would try to re reinitiate a deal with these uh, with these group. The only thing the federal government has really done proactively, aside from you know actively blocking any attempt to reschedule marijuana and making research difficult for the federal farm supply, is um, a move forward a pharmaceuticalized private uh, marijuana operation, and, and that's New York has been a part of that as well. Uh, at GW Pharmaceuticals in England is making marijuana uh, extracts, hash oils, that can be given uh, under the tongue, a spray, and it's been approved in many countries, more than 20. And um, in the U.S. they've run clinical trials with cancer pain, um, and um, some of those trials have been here in New York itself, and it shows it to be effective. Uh, they're also starting trials for uh, epilepsy with a CBD-rich extract of cannabis. All of this just shows you that what the government is interested in is, is, is monopolized, pharmaceuticalized, um, out of local control cannabis. And uh, that's really not the direction New York should be headed in. We should be following the lead of the other states that also have these programs. And it was great that New York had this program in the 70s, sorry, the early 80s. Many patients were able to benefit almost 90, more than 90% efficacy for stopping nausea and vomiting and chemotherapy. And so we've collected that data, and, and now we've got to um, put it to use and develop an, uh, a proper program here um, that allows a whole variety of conditions to be treated, uh, all kinds of licensed prescribers to, to use it, and you know education available for those doctors, and a uh, safe supply for patients. The only reason that cannabis uh, in Colorado, this Charlotte's Web strain, was able to be developed that helped so many ch children with neurological disorders is because of state medical marijuana program that allowed producers to try different strains out on patients. So we need that here too. We, need, we can't get shoehorned in a program uh, with a small number of hospitals with this federal supply, which um, we, we know has not been a reliable or trustworthy partner in, in medical use or compassionate use for cannabis. Uh, it's a heavily politicized partner, so um, that's why we're going to Albany tomorrow to um, have a press conference and lobby the legislators to, to adopt comprehensive reform of the Compassionate Care Act. Um, and, you know, I was interviewed by a French um, radio station recently uh, about this developments, and the, the journalist said that they were discussing these issues in France as well, and a few days later I saw that um, France had approved this cannabis extract from GW as well, Sativex, uh, for uh, multiple sclerosis. So it just it just goes to show you that um, you know there is more than meets the eye here. That there is this huge uh, private interest trying to get into this market. And uh, you know I'm not opposed to pharmaceuticalized approach, but cannabis is a Commonwealth botanical and should be available for all who need it. And states really should take it upon themselves to um, develop a program that works for their citizens. Um, this is Sunil Agarwal uh, signing out uh, till, till next time. You can check me out at cannabinergy.com or at um, the Center for the Study of Cannabis and Social Policy, which is cannabisandsocialpolicy.org, where I'm the uh, Executive Science Director. Thank you.